Yo, what is going on, you Slackers? I am your host, Slackers Gaming, bringing you another episode of Smash Bro Ultimate Newcomer Tournament thing. Uh, what's the title of the series? Is there really a title? It's basically a tournament I threw together of potential newcomers, and I'm put it into a tournament, and we basically vote, and then uh, in one week time after the episode goes up, voting gets cut off. And we'll see whoever has the most votes and that person moves on. But the loser doesn't just fall out of the tournament. We do have a loser bracket down here. Um, it's hard to uh, show the whole thing. I mean, I guess I could zoom out a bit. But basically, if you lose once, you're not done. But if you lose twice, it is a double elimination. You lose twice, you are done from the tournament. And then, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of a fun way to see who uh, the community really thinks could be a or more potential uh, than others kind of in terms of voting and that kind of stuff. I just thought it would be fun, so I made the series up. Um, yeah, so uh, today I didn't do any intro video because I don't think I did one yesterday either. But uh, a lot of people, no matter what I change my intro to, there's always people, no, nah, your intro sucks. Okay, fine. I'm going to try no intros now. So, yeah, no intro videos. Uh, let me know if you think just getting right to the point is better. Anyway, I don't care. Today's episode, matchup number four. Um, I do got to explain one thing about the tournament real quick. So some people have been saying, oh, these matchups are kind of weird and they don't make sense. Well, that's because um, there's 36 potential uh, newcomers that I put into this tournament. So th these ones in red right here, these, uh, these two characters, these two characters, and then, well, these four characters on the right, those are the play-in games, play-in. So, like, I came up with 36. The tournament would work with 32. But I ended up having 36, so I had to make some playing games. So yeah, the matchups might not be the greatest yet, but it's kind of like the last few trying to get into the tournament, and then we get into the big stuff. So I just wanted to clear that up kind of a bit. So let's do this. So today's matchup is uh, the last play-in game that we have. And each character I kind of assigned a seed, like a number, you know, like bracket style. If anybody's familiar with, like, March Madness, you know, you got a 1C, 2C, all that kind of stuff. So today, it, the last one is Lycanroc. I put him at the, the 30th seed, and I got Shantae's the 34 seed. Don't look too much into the seeds. It's just kind of where I place characters. But, um, so it's Lycanroc versus Shantae. So let's get into today's episode. And, I mean, what can you say, right? Let's start off with Lycanroc. Is Lycanroc likely? Uh, maybe. I think if Pokemon is going to get a rep from Gen 7, Lycanroc is one of the more likely, in my opinion, because it's one of the more popular, one of the more recognizable Pokemon from Gen 7. I believe Lycanroc plays a pretty, you know, prominent role in Ash's team in the anime. That is one thing. Um, I think one thing kind of going against Lycanroc would be what form would they use? If Lycanroc was in the game, as a playable character, what form would they use? Would they use dusk, midday, or dawn? You know, what what form would they use? I mean, you can't you can't really have all three because that's like three different characters. So I mean, that it, trying to decide which form would make some fans of other ones. So like, if they went with uh, the dusk form, I mean, that's my favorite one. If they went with that, okay, cool. If they went with uh, midday form, I'm also fine with that. But it would make you know fans of the other two forms. Maybe uh, it would get them a little riled up and upset. So I guess trying to come up with the correct, I don't know, evolution or correct um, form for Lycanroc could be a bit of a challenge. But I don't know. Lycanroc would be somewhat likely, in my opinion, because uh, I've said this before, but I think it's Mario, Fire Emblem, and Pokemon always get a new rep in the series. So... Uh, it just depends on what Sakurai and his team, like, who are they thinking? Are they going to go with a new Gen 7? Are they going to wait till Gen 8 and maybe think about that for DLC? Who knows? That's way off in the future. It's over a year away. But, uh, yeah, Lycanroc's got to be considered. So, of course, I put Lycanroc in my tournament. And uh, Lycanroc's opponent is Shantae. All right, so Shantae. Interesting character here. Indie character, third party. And when talking about indie characters, uh, it's mainly Shovel Knight and Shantae that I hear. Uh, Sans pops up once in a while. I think, what, from Undertale? I think that's what his game is. I could be wrong. I don't know about the character at all. But, um, so it, it's quite interesting to... How would... Shantae's got a moveset. That, that uh, category is absolutely fine. Moveset is good. 
popularity is kind of there, but then again, it's indies. No indie character has ever had a playable character in Super Smash Brothers, and that could be a big, you know, like negative towards Shantae or just any. I mean, Shovel Knight as well. From um, I think Shovel Knight was yesterday's episode, I believe, and I think I did cover that a bit. But uh, just kind of, how does Sakurai and his team really look at indie characters? I know Nintendo and indie like um, indie platformers or indie uh, developers have a pretty good you know working relationship. Nintendo loves the indies on their platform, so I mean it's good for them, but is it good enough for you know a specific indie character to get in uh, to Smash Bros as a playable character? I guess we'll see, but today we're just kind of focused on Lycanroc versus Shantae, who's more likely to advance at least in this tournament. Uh, in my vote, I would have to say Pokemon. I'd have to go Lycanroc for my vote, I think. Pokemon has the more the better chance to get. I mean, sure, Lycanroc's fighting with a bunch of others, but I don't think I don't think indie characters are really on Sakurai's radar. I really don't. Even with the Smash ballot and the votes that Shantae or Shovel Knight got, I think I did vote for Shovel Knight yesterday, but that's different point. Uh, but yeah, my vote is for Lycanroc today. Uh, again, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Please vote. Uh, real quick, thank you to everybody who has. Uh, watched these videos and commented and all that stuff um you guys seem to be really enjoying this and i'm very like seriously i'm so happy it took me a long time i've said this before it took me quite a bit to set this whole thing up but uh i'm very very happy that uh, i was able to do this very happy that you guys are enjoying the series you know so thank you you know, I hope you enjoy, and I tried to get as many characters as I could in, but um, again, that's pretty much it for this one. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Who, uh, um, who beside, between Lycanroc and Shantae would you vote for? Who do you think has the more, the, the better chance to get in as a playable character? Or you can just vote for who you'd rather have. It's all good. You get one vote. I'll tally this up after one week, and then we'll see who moves on in one week from what's today. Thursday, I think this video goes up on a Thursday, but we'll see next Thursday who moves on between this matchup. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, this video is coming to an end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and hopefully we catch you guys on the next one. Peace out, everybody.